Hello, hello, hello. You're, you're here, you're responding. That's good. As, as, well, thank you. As Cesar said, one of the most interesting names that he's, that he's come to know, and thank you. Hopefully now I have an interesting story uh, to begin. There have been many, very uh, many interesting interpretations of my name over time. So, uh, F-O-X, let's just spell it. F-O-X, Fox, three letters, very simple. Well, 17 years ago, I coached a baseball team in the Coastal Plains League down in, uh, over in Edenton, North Carolina with my friend Stuart. And we stayed that summer with a house mother named Ruth. And during game days, I, myself, alone, would walk to a local inlet or beach to read. So I did this one morning. Ruth was there. Uh, it was just me and Ruth in the house. Stuart had gone out to run some errands. And um, she said, hey, you, where are you going? I said, you, I'm the only person here. Why would you call me you? But I'm going to the beach. So I did. And I guess I was at the beach. And Stuart came back. And obviously, I was not there. And he asked Ruth, where is he? And Ruth said, Frog is at the beach. <laughs> she called me Frog. So with that, I am Fox, I am a poet, and I'll begin this way. Even if tough times last, tough people, they last longer. And as you go down that mogul-ridden path, let your faith grow stronger. If you fall off the horse, Get up and get back on the saddle. Victory Highway is not smooth sailing, for that road is a constant uphill battle. Even if positive thoughts don't work, negative thoughts, they'll kill you. So keep your mind, your body, and your soul on high alert. You will never know the heights you will take yourself to. And keep one hand on the wheel and one foot on the gas. These struggles you will face they are real, and you could tell them to kiss your <laughs> right pinky toe. <laughs> Let the path to victory not drive you insane, because we know this road to success is not paved. I am always reminded that my road to success has not been paved. For example, it's June of 2002, and to my utter delight, the University of South Carolina baseball team has made it back to the College World Series after a 17-year hiatus. I'm a student coach on that team, and I could picture myself standing in the dugout during the team introductions before our first game against Georgia Tech, which was nationally televised on ESPN. I look down and see that my feet are donned by a brand new pair of turf shoes. These could not have come at a better time, because my old ones, like these, were worn thin and porous at the front from the toe heel pattern in which I walk. Waiting for my name to be called, I tell myself, Fox, stand up straight. Fox, pick up your feet. Fox, when you run, please run heel toe. And for goodness sakes, Fox, bend at the hip. Finally arrived the climactic moment. Student coach number two, Fox Beyer, and I took off. <laughs> That's right. On national TV, I took three steps, tripped, fell forward, caught myself with my hands, and began doing a few push-ups. <laughs> Here is us before game two. I'm not in the picture, because they're all looking at me on the foul line doing push-ups from game one. <laughs> My hands have been there for me. In June of 2002, as you just heard, and in July of 1997, when I threw out the ceremonial first pitch to a New York Yankees game. Yes, that day, before the game, on the field, I tripped fell forward, and caught myself with my hands. 
I look at my hands. I think of my parents. I think of my therapists. Mom and Dad, Kathy, Debbie, Jose, Teddy, and Mrs. Schumler. You see, they were geniuses. They knew me, a kid growing up with cerebral palsy. I was going to fall every day of my life. It was inevitable. But 99.9% .9 of my falls were forward. So in therapy, they had me practice falling forward so I could get my hands out in front of my body as quickly as I could to catch myself and prevent myself from any further harm. I look at my hands and I realize that my life and all of our lives are not about trying not to fall every day. They're about always trying to get back up. According to the Center of Disease Control and Prevention, 58.2% of all of us with CP walk independently. But I know in my heart, all of us, with CP or not, we all fall every day. That is to say, we all have setbacks. The key is not staying down too long. Author Susan Gamage of many books, including Violence and Abuse, writes that self-pity can paralyze a person into inaction. And to me, that's the real failure, not doing anything. And columnist Mark Hill writes that wallowing in self-pity is like wrestling with a shark. Wrestling with a shark? No human being is ever going to win that battle. So I propose today that we learn from sharks not to pity ourselves instead of wrestling with them and continuing to pity ourselves. For example, if you go on to Amazon.com, where it seems you can buy anything, you can also buy shark teeth. <laughs> Here's a set I keep in my classes. And on the first day of class, I show my students a video of a great white just exploring, not looking to eat anything, take a nip of a camera in front of it just to see what it was. The question then becomes, why are so many shark teeth available? The fact is, you can go to Amazon.com and buy them from $5.99 to $17.99 to everywhere in between in many shapes, sizes, and varieties. Well, as many of us may know, sharks shed and lose thousands of teeth in a lifetime. But did the great white who bit the camera wallow in self-pity when it bit something it didn't want and its teeth fell out? No, because it knows, and we know, sharks' teeth are typically replaced within 24 hours of losing them. The shark in this situation is telling us as humans simply this, when you fail, it doesn't make you a failure. I'd like to end with this poem I wrote. When you fail, it doesn't make you a failure. So give it your best at what you want to be, because it would be a total shame if you failed at what you didn't want to be. In the end, you might not have it all. But remember, it's not naive to try. So prayer eyes, picture eyes, and actualize. And in the end, fly high. Yes, as it stands right now, all you have is your current reality. And every day in your head, fear disguises as practicality. Practicality says play it safe, says this year after year. But if you would dare lift its mask, all you would see is fear. So lift the mask up, stare right through fear, and throw it to the past. Be the person you were destined to be. Turn around and let self-pity kiss your right pinky toe. Thank you.